right? So we have covered how switch learns MAC address, right? And let me just what are the things that we have covered? How switch learns MAC addresses, right? And uh, how to configure VLAN, right? Access port. And trunk port also we have covered, right? So these are the things that we have covered. But basically, now the sum protocols is uh, dependent on this trunking encapsulation and all the things, right? Means with the help of this protocol, whatever I'm going to tell you about that protocol, that is very important, right? Now. After completing that protocol, uh, we will configure the trunk port and just uh, then we will just look and we will just uh, basically we will discuss the difference between the some trunking encapsulation protocols, right? I know that uh, we have covered that trunking encapsulation protocol. We form the trunk, we form the access port, right? But basically, what are the trunking encapsulation protocol we have, and what are the differences that we have in this trunking encapsulation protocol? We will also talk about that, right? So before talking that, let me describe first of all the our topic, which is DTP and VTP, right? So we are going to describe first of all discuss this DTP, which is called. Dynamic Trunking Protocol. Right? So, what is this basically and uh, what, let me describe, the functions of the DTP and uh, the, you can say that how DTP works, right? It's a Cisco proprietary protocol. Cisco the battery protocol what what does uh, what does the mean by the Cisco proprietary protocol means this protocol is only work on the Cisco devices only right means suppose that we have we have suppose that this is our switch right so we can configure uh, this is this DTP protocol if that switch is our the Cisco device or Cisco vendor right if that switch is uh, the another vendor just like Huawei or Palo Alto so we cannot we cannot configure these protocol over on this port, right? Over on this devices, which is regarding the another company devices, right? So this protocol is only made for the Cisco devices. That is the mean of this Cisco proprietary protocol, right? So by default, it's enabled on all of the uh, all of the port of switch, right? By default. It's unable it's unable on all ports of switch. Right? By default it's unable on all port of a switch. Now it creates access port and trunk port dynamically. Right, it creates trunk port and access port dynamically. Right now. 
we have the periodic message uh, it is also going to send the periodic message which is after every 30 second right it is going to generate their messages periodically after every 30 seconds now we have also the multicast address multicast address which is this protocol is used sorry multicast mac address right we have the multicast ip address as well as we have the multicast mac address as well right so it uses multicast mac address which is 0100 Zero C C C dot C C C C C. Right. Now, let's talk about the modes. So, if we talk about DTP modes, so first one which is we have dynamic auto, and the second one which is we have dynamic desirable. so basically uh, we will we will also talk about these things like uh, where we can configure the dynamic auto and where we can configure the dynamic desirable and with using these modes of the dpp we can form the trunk but but uh, we can we can choose uh, one side or the both side which is dynamic auto dynamic auto or dynamic desirable dynamic desirable we will also talk about these things right so don't worry just write it down these are uh, these the whole information about this then we will talk about the some commands right and how to how we can configure the dtp over on the switch then we will talk about those things right so now the next point which is uh, with using these modes uh, how we can form the trunks and what is the rule of this right so let me describe that let me erase the some points from there then we will talk about the dtp modes and how we can form the trunk with using the dtp modes right so these are my dtp modes right so with using these dtp modes which is we are going to use it c what is what is the main function uh, like where we need to form the trunk between the two switches right so suppose that this is my switch number 1 and this is my switch number 2 right so in between this switch we are going to make this port as a trunk port so suppose that this is my fast ethernet 0/0 and this is also my fast ethernet 0/0 interface right so now uh, or suppose that this is my 0/1 so what what are the configuration or uh, what are the modes that we have, we are going to use over on this which is to make this port as a trunk right so the modes first one which is dynamic auto and one side we are going to use the dynamic auto and another side which is we are going to use dynamic desirable right so there we are uh, with using these two modes we can uh, we are we are means we are able to form this port as a trunk port right we can form the trunk but if you use if we use the dynamic auto one side and and the another side which is we are going to also use dynamic auto right so in case we cannot form the trunk right we cannot form the trunk because of see for just just like uh, just just the uh, just 
view like that, which is uh, this auto is like elect itself as a server, and this desirable is elect itself uh, as a client, right? So if the server is going to send any data, so client always have to receive it, or the client always have to request for the data, right? So suppose that this is also a server, this is also a server, right? In I'm talking about in case, right? In this case, this is also server and this is also server. So what they will do, they will, uh, this one is also going to send the data, this one is also going to send the data, right? Means no one is receiving the data. So we cannot use it, right? Means everyone is sending the data, but where is my receiver? There is no receiver, right? So we cannot receive the data over there. That is just like that, this uh, dynamic auto and the dynamic desirable will work like that, okay? Now, let's talk about dynamic desirable if we use one side and the another side we also use the dynamic desirable. So, there we can form the trunk because of there is, uh, sorry, uh, we can form the trunk over there. Let me just make it. <clears throat> we will we will do the practical, then uh, everything will be clear, right? So don't worry about that. We will also do the practical. Why we, uh, why we can able to form the trunk with using this dynamic desirable and the dynamic desirable from the both the side, which is both are the clients, right? So these clients can receive it and this client is also can send the data, right? Suppose that this is my the shared PC, right? This is work like the shared PC. So this one, suppose that this is also work like the shared PC. So this PC is also going to share some file and this one is also going to share some file, right? And by default, basic, uh, the by default basic behavior of the switch is to receive the data and the request for that data, right? So this will receive the data and this will give the request for the data. Whatever the data you have, you can send it the another data as well. I'm requesting for that, right? This one is also going to request for that, right? This one is also going to request for that. So over there, we can able to form the trunk over there, right? Now, just let me directly do the practical regarding that. Just, uh, just only one thing. Let me open the Cisco packet tracer, which is we are going to do the practical over then over on that only, right? So first of all, we are going to learn that how to configure DTP and that and how to disable DTP in DTP and uh, then we will see this the dynamic auto and that make desirable configuration over there, right? Now. If we talk about the encapsulation protocol, let me just describe one more thing. If we talk about the encapsulation protocol, which is we did, right? So we have the two encapsulation protocol, which is IESL, which is called enter switch link, right? And the another one which is we have 802.1Q, right? This is my open standard protocol. Right? What does the mean by this open standard protocol? Basically, this is my also Cisco proprietary protocol, right? This is also my Cisco proprietary protocol. So we can use this ISL over on the Cisco proprietary, <coughs> over on the Cisco devices only, right? But this 802.1Q we can use over on the Cisco device as well as over on the another company device as well, such as, such as, uh, your uh, Palo Alto, right? Huawei, Alcatel, HP, right? So whatever the devices company we have, we can use this .1Q encapsulation protocol to 
make the trunk to form the trunk right so we are going to look this uh, for that right so let me just Let me open the Cisco packet tracer, then we will do the practical regarding that. Again, I have to log in. Let me log in. Right, so we are going to take the switch over there. So this is my switch, right? And between the two switches, we are going to form this trunking encapsulation protocol, right? And this is my the port, uh, sorry, this is my the cable that is, we are going to take the automatic cable from there only, right? So once, uh, like, let me see that which port I have taken by default. So first Ethernet zero, or zero slash one over on that, and the same thing over on that as well, right? So let me open this. See, let me show you one more thing. This is my switch, right? This is my switch. So basically, we have uh, just counted, I think, the 24 port which is we have over there, right? And these two is uh, is we can use for the for the taking access or uh, for the physical access only, right? So now let me just first of all. Let me just describe this thing that the configuration part now, right? Now, which command we use it over there, which is unable, right? Now we are inside the user mode, right? Now, just come over the configuration mode over there. And now, over here, which is we are like where we have to configure this, uh, where we have to use this DTP modes over on the it's fast Ethernet zero slash one, right? So first of all, we have to go over on that port, right? So interface fast Ethernet zero slash one. Now, how to enable this DTP modes over there and the modes, which is what are the modes that we have? Let me just show you. Switch port mode. Now, what are the modes we have? We have, we can, if if you can use this access, like if you wanted to use this port as an access port, right? So you can use access command over there, so it will directly move to the access port, right? See, if you want to make this trunk, uh, if you wanted to make this port as a trunk, so this is uh, basically, uh, if you use this trunk command over there, so it is by, by default, it is going to, make the trunk but it is not going to look the DTP over there right by default it is going to make the trunk but it's not looking for the DTP modes and all the things right if you wanted to choose the DTP modes right you can see over there you can uh, you can you can see over there which is the trunk mode over there right so what we are going to use the dynamic over there right now let me show you dynamic now do the question mark again right so we have the two modes of the DTP as you can see over there we have the two modes which is auto and the desirable right so inside the auto what is this set trunking mode dynamic negotiation parameter to auto right and the same thing is also set trunking modes dynamic negotiation parameter to desirable right so one side which is we are going to use the auto mode over there, right? And the another switch, which is over, uh, which is the another switch, which is we are going to use on the on the another side, which is dynamic desirable, right? So we are going to use this side as a dynamic auto, right? 
Now, the one more thing that which is we have, let me show you one more command. If you wanted to uh, check that this, this uh, basically this port is uh, is is the trunk what is the status of this port so we have also the command over there let me show you first of all uh, let me configure this DTP modes and uh, the trunking protocols over there right so let me configure over on this switch right so just enable that command right go in the enable mode you Right, the configuration mode and go on that interface which is you want to configure that, right? So zero slash one, right? Now, what was the command? Switch port mode dynamic disable, right? The another side which is I have I, I have used which is dynamic auto. The another side which is we use the dynamic auto, right? Now over here we use the dynamic disable. So once you uh, once you able to form the trunk, once this this is uh, once your uh, DTP modes will be active and the trunk port will be active, so you will get this kind of uh, this kind of dialog box dialog also right, which is this port this fast six hundred zero slash one change status to up right means first of all it will go down right then it will come up okay now about this uh, about see what are the commands that we have to check that my trunk is formed or not right so we have the command which is show interfaces trunk so that command will give you that modes of this and what is the encapsulation protocol which is we are using and what is the what is the status of it and the native VLAN over on that port, right? So let me show you which mode I have used over there, which is dynamic disable, right? Which is over on this switch. Okay. Now if you look on over on this switch, so let me sh also show you over on that switch as well. Just exit and exit. Right? Show interfaces trunk. Now, over there, we use the dynamic auto. Right? Once your trunking encapsulation protocol will enable or uh, it it's work properly, so you will get the status of it, which is the trunking trunking status. Right? Now. Over here, you are also getting the status, which is the trunking. Over here, you are also getting the status, which is the trunking. Now, what we are going to do now, we are going to make some changes in that, right? Over on that port only. So what are the changes? Uh, I just think it. First of all, go in the configuration mode and go on that interface, which is you want to change it. Now, before this, uh, before doing changes, these ports are the trunk port, right? these ports are the trunk port now i'm going to make this port the only one port of a one switch which is the access port right so once we make this port as an access port so the trunking status will be changed right let me also do that just see that right just watch it on the another side right so switch port mode access Right now, what is the error that you get it? Inconsistent port type, right? This is the inconsistent port type. So this VLAN, this this is my native VLAN, right? The native VLAN is blocking that, right? This is the the native VLAN is blocking over on that interface, which is the inconsistent port type, right? Now, let me show you one more thing. Show interfaces trunk. Now, we do not have any interface, uh, any trunk port over there, right? Let me show you on the another switch, which is we did, we did not do any configuration over on that before 
uh, like after forming the trunk, right? So show interfaces trunk. Now this is showing uh, this is this is the information that is the desirable and that is the status of the trunking, right? Means this is able to form the trunking, right? Means uh, whatever the modes that we used it, which is the which is fine, right? Means we use the dynamic disable over there and that is the encapsulation protocol which is used, which is we use H0.2.1Q, right? And this, this status is also the trunking, right? Means, let me show you, let me just explain. Let me explain. Now you can also see over there, uh, this is able to form the trunk, but this is the access port, right? So once this is uh, this is going to give the uh, any request for the regarding the trunking, but this is not receiving any receiver will be not there. So we cannot this this uh, this which is not able to form the trunk, right? Because of this is not getting any request from the another side. So let me show you. Now. I have formed the trunk over there, which is desirable, right? Now, this switch is used as an access port, right? This one is sending the trunking information, but this one is sending the access information, right? Means this is saying that this is my the access port, right? But this one is saying that whatever you port have, I don't know, but my port in information, which is we have the trunk port, which is I'm using this mode over there, right? But this one is saying that I'm using the access port over on that port, right? So this switch is not able to form the trunk, right? Because of we are using the trunking encapsulation protocol over on the this switch only, right? Which is the dot one q, right? Eight zero two dot one q, right? So the only one thing that which is we are using over on that switch, so we must have to use the same thing over on the this switch as well, right? So now the main thing uh, which is we have, now we just configure the, previously we configure what we configure, let me just, we configure the desirable over there, right? And auto on that. Right, so the trunking encapsulation was working over there. Brown. Now the main thing, uh, the the main changes which is we are going to use it, which is it's already configured, right? The desirable is already configured over on that switch. Now we are also going to use the desirable also over there, right? We are going to follow that uh, that structure or that rule which is we have that, right? Which is the forming the trunk with using the DTP modes, right? So let me just make this port as a dynamic desirable, right? It's already the dynamic desirable, so we are not going to make the changes over on that because of it's already configured, right? So let me just do the changes over on that switch only. Just wait a few minutes. Just wait a few minutes, guys. I think uh, I just did a mistake. Come on over there. So you will also face it if you did it the same thing. All right, just wait a few seconds only that will uh, the problem will be solved automatically, right? Right, so let me move to the configuration first of all. 
configuration terminal right now where we have to configure that interface passes and net zero slash one right now what what was the command that we can use it which is switch port mode dynamic desirable right now this status is going to reject it because of the command reject, rejected conflict between negotiate and the dynamic status right means both the from the both the side which is we are going to use the dynamic over on that device we are also using the dynamic desirable over on that device we are also using the dynamic desirable right so i just did the mistake which is uh, this is not able to form the trunk right let me just make it correct This is not able to form the trunk, right? Only this case, which is we have to form the trunk, right? Means one side we must have to dynamic auto and the another side we must have to dynamic desirable, right? This will prove that, that we must have to dynamic auto over there. Let me show you. If we use the dynamic auto one side, so, why this is going to reject okay i have to make some changes which is first of all we have to disable that command which is related to the access port right so no switch port mode access right so i have just disabled that command from their side right now let me do that auto contribution the command is reflecting because of the switch is already configured as a access port right so we have to first of all disable that mode then we can form the trunk right or we can do one thing um, let me just do one thing see over on that switch we is already formed the trunk right means uh, sorry this dynamic desirable is also you already used right now what we are going to do we are going to use the dynamic desirable first of all we are going to see that right then we will just look at this Hold on a minute. Right. So first of all, go over on that port which is interface pass is at zero slash one. Right. Now search port mode dynamic desirable. Right. So over on that switch which is we use dynamic desirable. Right. And the port which is we have. Let me show you. Pass it on at zero slash one, right? But you can see over there, or on this switch number two, which is the interface is up, right? But the status is not configured, right? Once the status will be come up, so this this will be green, right? So let me show you that show interface status. Show interface trunk. So this is able to form the trunk. Means I was right. I was right in that case. Right in that case, I was right. That is why I just think that why this is not going to make the trunk because of uh, we can uh, we can we can i have already explained that right means what are the things that we have we can use the both the side that uh, dynamic desirable and the dynamic desirable we can form the trunk with using these commands right so both the side we are for we are we are uh, using the dynamic desirable and the dynamic desirable right and this one is active right means this trunk port is working properly okay so that is uh, that is the thing that we have, right? You can also see over there that interface line protocol is up, right? So 
we can use this dynamic disable and dynamic disable from the both the side, right? Easily we can form the term. Okay. Now, if you wanted to change the negotiation type. Right. If you wanted to change the negotiation type, then we can also do that. Right. Let me show you. So previously, I'm using the 802.1Q over there. Right. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to change that negotiation type, which is over on that port, which is we configure the trunk. Right. Now, first of all, you have to go inside that. Then you have to type type the command, which is switch port trunk encapsulation. I think that command is not working. But the commands will be uh, a switch port trunk encapsulation. Now over there we can use dot one q or isl, right? Then we can use this command, right? So actually that command is not working inside this packet tracer. If we uh, like, we can also do this practical over on the GNS tool, right? Which is we have. So let me also do that because of uh, the clarity is the very important thing, right? So let me do that, uh, which is how to change encapsulation type, right? How to change encapsulation type. Let it come up. This is going to bind with the um, server, I think. DTP. I have the switch over there, right? So I'm going to take this switch is Let the machine will come up. <laughs> Let the machine will come up, then we can do the practical easily, right? Each and everything will be work properly. Because of we are going to uh, do the practical regarding the VTP as well, so uh, the each and everything will be work properly over on the GNS, right? So uh, I will also tell you that how to install GNS and uh, where you will get it, right? So don't worry about that, right? So it's working properly. Let me add the ports which is we have. Right, and let me let me turn on that device, which is from there. Right, so what I'm going to use, uh, what I'm going to do basically, we are going to change the trunking encapsulation over on that, right? So first of all, we, are going, we have to form the trunk over there, then we can use it, right? So let me form the trunk encapsulation protocol over on that, then we can do that, right? Right, so let me just move on that interface, which is fast and zero by six. Sorry, the Ethernet. Right. So uh, what we are going to do, we are going to first of all form the trunk. Right. So switch port 
strong encapsulation. What kind of encapsulation protocol that we can use it over there? Let me show you. Right? So dot one q ISL and the negotiate. Right? Right, so this is the uh, this is the only one option that we have that we can form the trunk over on that device. Right, if we use switch port mode trunk, so see this command is not working inside that. Right, means command rejected over on that port. Right, because of this port is not the switch port. Right, so first of all we have to change. Uh, we have to type the command which is switch port. Right then the status will be come up automatically, right? Then we can use this command. But this command will be not work in any how, right? So which command we have to prefer that? Switch port trunk in calculation dot one q always, right? You can use the trunking in calculation dot one q or the ISL as well, right? So let me do that another side, uh, the another switch which is the switch number two. Right, interface, Ethernet zero slash zero. Right, switch port, trunk encapsulation dot one. Type switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q. Right, we have to first of all type the command which is switch port, then we can use that command. Right. The trunking encapsulation is configured. Let me show you. Show interface is trunk. Right? The trunking encapsulation is configured. Which which encapsulation which is it uses by default? Dynamic desirable over on the switch number two. Let me show you over on the switch number one as well. So type the end. Show interface is prompt. This one is also by default. It is using the dynamic desirable, right? So the trunking is also unable to work on that, right? So everything is clear, right? So with using with using this command that that we can uh, form the trunk, right? Okay, guys, it's clear. Do you have any doubt, guys? Okay, let's talk about the native VLAN, right? The next topic which is we have which is we did not cover, which is the native VLAN. So, what is native VLAN and how we can configure that? So, the native VLAN basically we called VLAN 1 as a native VLAN, right? We cannot we cannot change it or modify it. Right? Now It is used to support it is used to support untagged data on trunk port. On On trunk port, right? Now, only dot one q is support as a native VLAN. Only 
802.1q support native villain not isl right so the only h02 to h02 dot 1q support the native villain right now the next question which is we have how to create native villain to any villain on trunk how to create native villain to any any villain on trunk port so what will be the command from that which is first of all you have to go over on that port right which is look like that okay so you have to go inside that port suppose that interface fast ethernet 0/0 right then the commands will be come inside that right just like that okay then you have to type that command switch port trunk native villain switch port trunk native vlan and whatever the vlan you just wanted to configure 2 3 or anything right let me also do that then you can understand right so let me just uh, see over there the native vlan member which is one right so for what what is the thing that we are going to do that first of all we are going to create the vlan suppose that vlan number 10 i have created right and do the exit let me show you do show vlan break right the vlan is created over there right so what i'm going to do i'm going to make this vlan as a native vlan right over on that port which is this one right so you can say over there the native vlan which is one over there over on that port so what we are going to do first of all we have to go over on that port what is going on interface ethernet 0/0 right so which command we use it switch port trunk native vlan and the vlan number right so vlan number which is we did it which is 10 let me show you right show interfaces Trunk. Right now, the native VLAN is changed over on that port. Right, so with using that command, we can use this uh, this native VLAN uh, over on any port. Right, we can also do that over on the same side. Right, with using the command which is interface Ethernet zero plus zero. First of all, we have to create the VLAN. Right. so for the vlan number 10 which is we created now just go on that port which is ethernet 0/0 sorry right now just type that switch port trunk native vlan 10 let me show you show interface trunk right the native vlan information is changed over on that as well let me show you the previous configuration i think we did not do that right so this is how that we can configure this native vlan as a 
uh, uh, we can we can configure our electrons to the any native villa, right? So just write it down these commands, these commands, and uh, what is the native VLAN and where we can use it. Write it down these things. Then we will discuss the VTP, right? And before discussing the VTP, we are going to also discuss the difference between the dot one Q and the IESL, right? Now, guys, we are going to talk about this trunking encapsulation protocol, right? So, the trunking encapsulation protocol, which is we have two protocols, which is ISL and S02.1Q, right? So, first of all, it has the headers as well, right? And uh, it has basically lots of things. So let me just first of all describe these things that what are the differences we have in between that, right? Dot one Q. Okay. So let's talk about the differences between this A02.1 Q and the ISL. Right? If we talk about this ISL, so we have the first point which is It's a Cisco proprietary protocol. Right? If we talk about this 802.1Q, so it is open standard protocol. Right. Now the second one which is we have second difference is it's a thirty byte long extra information. Let me just write it down. It's a thirty byte long extra information. information in a existing Ethernet header. In an existing Ethernet header. Right? 26 byte ISL header and 4 byte ISL trailer. Right, 26 bytes, which is we have, ISL header, and the four bytes, which is we have, ISL trailer. Uh, ISL trailer. Right now, if you talk about this 802.1Q, so it has it has four byte long information. It has four byte long information, right? In an existing Ethernet header, where we have existing Ethernet header. Right? If we talk about the third one. So we have doesn't support untapped traffic, right?
right? If we talk about the third one, third example, which we have, is support untagged traffic. Untagged, right? Now, let's talk about the fourth one, which is it has. It does not support native VLAN. Doesn't support native VLAN. Right? So the native VLAN, which is by default one, right? Which is it is not supported. Now, as we talk about this uh, fourth one, which is it have, it supports native VLAN. That is, see, uh, this is the cause which is, uh, which is, that is why we use this 802.1Q as compared to IESL. Right now, the MTU size, which is we have fifteen hundred thirty byte, right? And this one is have the MTU size, which is one five zero four. Right? It means. The total, see, maximum MTU size, which is we have, uh, the MTU is called maximum transmission unit, right? Which is, it has the 1500 byte by default, right? This is the 1500 byte by default, but after this, uh, after after uh, adding this 1500 byte, it is going to add the 30 byte information of the ISL header, right? So just write it down these things. Then we will talk about the headers, uh, which is we have, right? And inside the headers, what are the informations that we have? We will also talk about that, right? So just write, make it, make the notes, write it down, and then we will back. Okay, let's talk about the headers of the ISL and 802.1Q, right? So let me first of all uh, create, let me just describe the headers of first ISL, right? ISL. So we have the ISL header over there, right? Let me just make it. We have the ISL header over there, that size which is we have 26 byte, right? And the rest of the parameters which is we have, we have also the preamble bit, right? Inside this preamble bit, what are the things that we have? Let me just write that. We have source MAC, right? We have destination MAC, right? We have type, right? We have, after that, we have the data whatever the data you are going to send it, about that information we have also, right? The one more field which is we have FCF, right? And we have last, last one which is ISL trailer. 
that size which is we have 4 byte right so this is the total size of the ISL header right now let's talk about 802.1q so inside that we have the same similar things that uh, but we have extra headers as well which is we are going to talk about just let me describe that first one which is we have preamble right and then we have source mac we have destination mac right and then we have 802.1q then we have then we have type then the similar things that we have right the data and fc as well now if we talk about this 802.1q so we have basically let me describe that so we have tpid tpi right which is the size of this which is we have 2 byte right let me uh, and the one more thing that we have which is TCI 2 byte information which is good, right since the total header size of this 802.1q which is we have 4 byte but how this 4 byte information that we have which is the combination of these two right so with the combination of these two which is uh, which is we have two byte information which is also we have let me just write it down two byte right now let's talk about inside that which is we have now now we have the cost built right which is the three bit right in this two byte how many bits we have one byte is equal to eight bits right so we have two bytes means we have 16 bits over there okay so the three bits is for this cross field now we have cfi field which is having how many bits we have? One bit. Mm, yes, one bit. Right? And the last which is which we have VLAN ID. VLAN ID which is we have 12 bits right so these are the total things that we have which is inside the TCIE bit now this cost is represent as a class of service right this is called class of service right and this CFI is going to represent this is right and the CFI is called um, conformal format indicator conformal format indicator right and this TPI is called tag protocol identifier
identifier so f i e r right so these are the things that which is we have right which is regarding this headers just so just write it down these headers which is we have and the next topic which is we have we are going to discuss which is vtp right okay so the next topics which is we have okay so just write it down these things and then we will talk about the vtp and all